Hey guys, my name is Corey and I've been freeze drying for a lot of years now and freeze dryers are super expensive. So I wanted to show you today how to build a DIY freeze dryer for as cheap as possible. And this time it's going to be an actual freeze dryer and not just a vacuum dryer. To keep things as cheap as possible, we got everything from Amazon and Walmart and our local thrift store. Freeze dryers have three systems. There's the heating system, the vacuum system, and the refrigeration system. So for us today, we've got our heating that's going to happen in this chamber, we've got our vacuum pump, and we've got our refrigeration system that's going to happen over here. Everything is going to be under vacuum, but those are the three systems broken apart. The first system we're gonna work on is the refrigeration system, and there are better foams for this, but I wanted to choose one that was a little bit more readily available than like a two-part polyester foam. The only problem with using these spray can foams is that they are a drying foam and they're not a reaction that takes place. So you do have to wait 24 hours for it to dry, which is a little bit of a pain. We're gonna be using dry ice as the way of cooling the cold trap. So I wanna create a thermally insulating barrier to prevent any kind of heat transfer from the outside into the dry ice cold trap. This ended up taking about five cans in total. And like I said, if I had to do it again, I would probably use a two-part marine grade foam. Just that way I didn't have to wait between layers for this to dry. If the vacuum system is the most important system when it comes to freeze drying, then the refrigeration system is by far the second most important. That's because the refrigeration does a lot of the heavy lifting when it comes to capturing water and removing water from the food. You can almost think of the refrigeration system as acting like 10 vacuum pumps. It helps reduce pressure by capturing the water vapor that would otherwise be increasing the pressure, as well as preventing water from getting sent to the pump. And the thing about capturing ice in a vacuum is that it needs to be really cold. In the scientific industry, their freeze dryers use what's called a two-stage refrigeration system, and they're actually able to get it down to negative 80 degrees in most cases. With home freeze dryers and commercial freeze dryers, you really only need to get down to negative 10 to negative 40 to be able to capture water for our purposes. I'm gonna let this dry overnight, and while it's drying, I'm going to also prep my bananas and put them in the freezer to let them freeze down as well. Building a freeze dryer this way, there's a vacuum chamber where all the food goes, but there's no actual cooling in that chamber. So that's why I've gotta put these in the freezer and freeze them ahead of time. Next step is to get the holes ready for the ice chamber. This is acrylic, so you wanna use one of these drill bits. It's kinda of meant for acrylic. Otherwise, you can blow out the acrylic on the backside. NPT threads into plastic are really not amazing, but all of this was available at Ace Hardware, so we wanna do something that was available to anybody. We're gonna add a little bit of sealant to each side of the threads, and this is just E6000 glue, which is a silicone style glue. You wanna make sure not to plug the holes like I did on this first attempt, so make sure that holes are clear once you're done. It's been about 24 hours at this point and our foam is cured, so we are going to go ahead and trim it up. This foam ended up expanding way more than I thought it would, probably because it's the Loctite Big Gap foam, so shout out to Loctite for making great stuff. And yes, this is a kitchen knife that I'm using to trim all this. It was the longest blade that I had, so I kinda of just made it work. Now that we have it all trimmed, we need to test fit the pot. And in doing this, I realized that I am not going to be able to close that lid. So going back to the drawing board, we are going to take these off and put on some 90s. I probably could have just drilled straight through the top, but I didn't want to have to worry about sloshing every time I open the lid, so we're going to do some 90s on here. These are eighth inch NPT to a quarter inch JIC fitting, and I realized later that they were even a little bit small, so if I had to do it again, I would probably go to a half inch NPT or something larger. I want these hoses just coming out the front, so in order to do that, we're going to have to drill these holes and then cut back the holes just a little bit. If I wanted a better seal, I probably could seal up the hoses inside these holes, but right now we're just going to send it. Now that everything fits, we're going to go ahead and prep the cold trap, and we're going to do that by pouring in rubbing alcohol. The rubbing alcohol will help distribute the coldness a lot more evenly once I add dry ice to this chamber. Dry ice has a temperature of about negative 109 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's crazy to me to think that on the coldest nights in Antarctica, it can get as cold as dry ice. So just know that if you live somewhere super cold, you can actually skip this step and just put your cold trap outside. And you really only need temperatures of negative 10 to negative 20, so if you do live up north, you could try this in the winter as kind of a fun science experiment. Our cold trap is ready, so we are going to grab the bananas and go and throw them in the vacuum chamber. I want to move kind of quickly during this portion because I don't want my bananas melting before I go and pull the vacuum. In a real freeze dryer, a leak even the size of a human hair will prevent the machine from getting down to vacuum. So in this case, we want to just go through and make sure that all of our fittings are tight, but we're probably still going to get some leaks. Watching the rubbing alcohol get cold and thick was probably one of the most interesting things about this project because once it got down to about negative 80, negative 90 degrees, the rubbing alcohol actually started to not quite solidify, but turn more to like a honey-like consistency. It actually got so cold that my laser stopped reading, which was kind of impressive. 
The ice trap needs to stay cold all night in order to capture the ice, but the frozen bananas actually need to warm up just slightly. Unfortunately, these warmed up just a little too quick and they also didn't get down to pressure because there was an ice plug that formed at the end of the hose. So we got above the triple point of water and because of that, they just didn't quite work. After freeze drying all night, I was actually really impressed with how cold the ice trap stayed and how well it captured ice. Checking the level of oil in the pump, it appeared that we had not sent any water to the pump, which again is super important in freeze drying. I actually made a mess here by letting in the air too fast, but you can see here the ice plug that formed at the end of the hose that prevented the vacuum chamber from getting down to vacuum. This only happened because the chamber was so cold and I probably could have prevented it by just using larger hose. I think a half inch NPT with maybe some half inch hose would have prevented this. As water boiled off the bananas and came down this hose to the cold trap, it just didn't have time to deposit on the cold trap before it froze here at the end. Commercial freeze dryers like TechSource use CO2 as a refrigerant gas and can actually see a similar problem but on a much larger scale. You can see here that we really didn't capture a whole lot of water, so it does appear that that ice plug formed pretty early on in the cycle. After a lot of trial and error, this setup doesn't quite work for fruit, but I do think that it would work for something like meat or for candy. All said and done, this setup cost me $287, but I think that it needs a little bit more modification before it'll work for things like fruit. My next step would be to enlarge the holes on the cold trap, just that way they don't ice over and plug because the cold trap is too cold. The other option would be to use a little bit less dry ice, so that way it didn't get as cold, but you'd have to feed it more often in order to regulate that temperature. Thanks for watching all the way to the end, and I'm considering doing two more videos on building DIY freeze dryers like this. If that's something interesting to you, go ahead and drop it in the comments, or if you have other ideas, go ahead and leave it there as well. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.